One minute ago, sensors on the Mediterranean seafloor recorded movement that should not exist, four centimeters in eight days, a mountain sliding into the sea with no earthquake, no warning, no sound, just silent, relentless motion beneath 1,200 meters of water, pulling an entire volcanic flank toward collapse. What if this isn't new? What if the Mediterranean remembers? What if the pattern repeating beneath Sicily has already destroyed civilizations and nobody recognized the cycle until now? In April 2016, a research vessel lowered five acoustic transponders onto the submerged slope of Mount Etna. The GOC array, developed by Geomar Helmholtz Center for Ocean Research in Kiel, Germany, would ping signals back and forth every 90 minutes, distances measured to within a centimeter. Scientists expected slow creep, maybe millimeters per year, the kind of motion satellites had tracked on land since the 1980s. What they found violated every model. The instruments sat at 1,200 meters depth, positioned on opposite sides of a major fault line. Each transponder communicated using acoustic pulses at 18 kilohertz, calculating distances with sub-centimeter precision. For 12 months, the array transmitted routine data. In May 2017, the southeastern flank lurched four centimeters seaward in just eight days. Dr. Morelia Erlob described it as a slow slip event, an underwater earthquake without seismic rupture. Pressure sensors detected subsidence, while horizontal displacement reached four centimeters. The entire underwater slope had shifted position while Sicily slept. GPS stations along the coast measured similar displacement during the same period, proving the flank moves as a unified block from summit to seafloor. The volcanic edifice behaves like a single massive wedge, grinding seaward on hidden weakness. But this was only the first warning. Etna's southeastern flank moves 3 to 5 centimeters per year on average, but the motion isn't steady. It comes in episodic bursts, violent pulses separated by months of calm. The pattern suggests stress accumulation followed by sudden release, stick-slip behavior seen in tectonic faults before major earthquakes. Movement increases away from the magmatic system, not toward it. If rising magma were pushing the flank outward, maximum motion would occur near the summit. Instead, displacement peaks at the coast and underwater. The mountain isn't being pushed by rising magma, it's being pulled by gravity. 8,000 years, that's when it happened before. Researchers at Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology traced seismic surveys across the Mediterranean seafloor. 20 kilometers offshore from Sicily, they found a debris field of chaotic sediments, carbon dated to approximately 8,000 years ago. Six cubic miles of rock and earth had crashed into the Ionian Sea at more than 200 miles per hour. The impact liquefied soft marine sediments for hundreds of kilometers. Cores extracted from the Sirt abyssal plain show graded bedding typical of instantaneous sediment redistribution. The Mediterranean floor still bears the scars. In the Ionian and Sirt abyssal plains, cores pulled up massive deposits of displaced sediment called mega turbidites. In local depressions across the Ionian seafloor, geologists found homogenites, tsunami-generated layers that settle only after catastrophic wave action stirs the ocean to its depths. These aren't local features. They stretch from North Africa to the eastern Mediterranean, synchronized in time and composition. Something had crossed the entire sea. Computer simulations reconstructed the ancient event with chilling precision. The collapse generated waves exceeding 40 meters, 10 stories high, radiating outward at 450 miles per hour. Southern Italy would have been inundated within 15 minutes, Greece's western coasts in one hour, Benghazi in 90 minutes. At the three and a half hour mark, the first surges reached Israel, Lebanon, and Syria. The timing matches something archaeologists had never understood. 
Off the coast of Atlet, Israel, beneath 8 to 12 meters of seawater lies the submerged ruins of Atlet Yam, a Neolithic settlement carbon dated to 8,000 years ago, preserved in sand and silence. Marine archaeologist Ehud Galili discovered it in 1984, and what he found defied gradual sea level rise. Rectangular stone houses with intact hearths, a megalithic stone circle, seven monoliths weighing 600 kilograms each, arranged around a freshwater spring, human skeletons in flexed burial positions, and piles of fish, gutted and sorted by species, left to rot where they lay. The village was abandoned in the middle of daily life. Wells at the site show salinization in their uppermost layers, evidence that seawater invaded suddenly. Marine sediments appear in contexts that should contain only fresh water deposits. Dr. Maria Pereshki proposed the connection in 2006. Atlet Yam was struck by the Etna tsunami. A settlement doesn't leave fish to rot during gradual flooding. The geological record across the Mediterranean began revealing a pattern. Submerged Neolithic harbors in Cyprus and Lebanon, buried under sediment layers dated to 8,300 to 7,900 years before present. Altered coastlines in North Africa showing catastrophic marine incursion. Displaced coral and shell beds in Greece, ripped from shallow waters and redeposited at impossible depths. Synchronized destruction across three continents. Only a basin-wide tsunami could leave such distributed evidence. Every mark pointed to a single source event, 8,000 years ago. The eastern flank of Mount Etna had collapsed before. The Valle del Bove, a massive depression scarring the volcano's eastern side, is the wound left behind. This valley stretches 8 kilometers long and 5 kilometers wide, its floor lying 1,000 meters below the summit rim. It's not a crater, it's a collapse scar the place where an entire sector of the mountain slid into the Mediterranean and triggered a tsunami that rewrote coastlines. And the ground had one more secret. Etna sits on unconsolidated sediment, a layer of ancient marine clays too weak to support the mountain's mass. The entire edifice slides seaward on this substrate, a gravitational failure happening in slow motion. Professor Hydran Kopp, coordinator of the GOC array, stated plainly, the entire slope is in motion due to gravity. It is therefore quite possible that it could collapse catastrophically, which could trigger a tsunami in the entire Mediterranean. No prediction exists for when. The GOC transponders provided data for 15 months before being retrieved in July 2017. The eight-day slip event in May 2017 was not triggered by magma intrusion or seismic activity. It occurred 12 kilometers offshore, in deep water, far from the volcanic center. If magma were the driver, movement would be greatest near the summit. Instead, displacement peaked at the coast and increased underwater. This is pure gravitational collapse. The signs were already spreading. Satellite interferometry shows the entire southeastern flank moving as a coherent block. GPS stations track millimeter-scale changes daily. On land, the motion creates visible cracks in roads and buildings near the coast. Faults offshore are accumulating strain, invisible fractures propagating through bedrock beneath the sea. The mountain is failing under its own weight. Comparison to other volcanic collapses offers little comfort. Mount St. Helens in 1980 shed 2.5 cubic kilometers of material in its lateral blast. The ancient Etna collapse moved 25 cubic kilometers, 10 times the volume. St. Helens generated localized destruction. Etna's collapse crossed an enclosed sea and struck distant shores. The Mediterranean's geography amplifies tsunami energy, funneling waves through straits and focusing them on densely populated coasts. Three countries face direct exposure. Italy, Greece, and Libya sit within the primary impact zone. Computer models project wave heights of 10 to 15 meters striking Calabria and Sicily within 20 minutes. Coastal cities like Catania, with 300,000 residents, lie at elevations averaging 5 meters above sea level. Greece's Ionian islands would face 8 to 12 meter waves within 60 minutes. Libya's northern coast could see 6 to 10 meter surges. The cascading consequences extend far beyond the water. Shipping routes through the Strait of Messina carry 15% of global maritime trade. 
port facilities in Naples, Piraeus, and Benghazi represent billions in infrastructure investment. Undersea fiber optic cables linking Europe, Africa, and the Middle East traverse the projected tsunami path. Energy pipelines, offshore platforms, desalination plants, all would face disruption or destruction. Tourism economies would collapse overnight. Deep beneath Etna's summit, at depths of 2 to 4 kilometers, a gas-rich magma reservoir sits closer to the surface than previous models suggested. Research published in 2023 used seismic tomography to map this shallow zone. Laboratory experiments showed that catastrophic failure could occur without obvious magma ascent. Gas pressure alone can destabilize the cap rock. The volcano is primed. In coastal villages near Catania, some residents live with daily reminders. Cracks appear in walls overnight. Foundations settle unevenly as the ground creeps seaward. We feel small tremors sometimes, says a resident of a fishing village south of the city, speaking to a local reporter in 2019. The scientists say it's normal, but my grandfather's house was 50 meters closer to the water when he built it. Scientists cannot offer timelines. Dr. Yurlob emphasized in published interviews that predicting catastrophic collapse remains impossible. The GOC network provides unprecedented data, but no historical record exists of the buildup to such events. Gravitational sliding occurs on timescales from decades to millennia. The eight-day slip in 2017 could be routine stress release or a precursor to acceleration. Nobody knows. Research funding has been irregular. Several GOC monitoring stations went offline in 2022 due to battery depletion and budget constraints. The network that detected the 2017 event no longer operates continuously. Italian authorities have expanded seismic monitoring on land, but offshore surveillance gaps persist. Real-time tsunami warning systems exist, but they react to events already in progress. Early warning requires prediction, not detection. The 8,000-year interval haunts every analysis. If the pattern holds, if gravitational collapse follows a cycle, the Mediterranean should be entering a new window of vulnerability. Geologists caution that recurrence intervals are statistical, not deterministic. The next collapse could happen tomorrow or in 5,000 years, but the physical evidence, the accelerating flank motion, the shallow gas reservoir, the episodic slip events, suggests the system is moving toward instability. Predictability does not equal prevention. Civil protection agencies in Italy, Greece, and Libya maintain evacuation plans for coastal zones. Tsunami drills occur periodically in at-risk communities, yet the scale of potential displacement dwarfs existing response capacity. Evacuating millions of people from Mediterranean coasts would require days of advance warning. Gravitational collapse could occur in minutes. The ethical question deepens. If scientists cannot predict the collapse, should the public be informed of the statistical risk? Some researchers argue that awareness enables preparedness. Others warn that vague probabilistic threats generate fear without actionable response. Who decides when uncertainty becomes disclosure? The Mediterranean itself offers no answers. For 8,000 years, the sea has risen gradually, submerging ancient shorelines and erasing the memory of that morning when the mountain fell. Atlet Yam sleeps beneath the waves, its megaliths still arranged around a spring that no longer flows fresh. The homogenite layers in the Ionian abyss settle undisturbed, a geological archive of violence frozen in sediment. Etna continues its slow descent. The mountain stands 3,400 meters above sea level, Europe's tallest active peak south of the Alps. Its summit craters glow red at night, fountaining lava in displays that attract tourists from across the world. Few visitors know that beneath their feet, the entire southeastern quadrant of the mountain is pulling away from the rest. Motion measured in millimeters per day, but accumulating toward a threshold nobody can define. The whisper before the fall. Ancient does not mean dormant. The forces that shaped the Valley del Bove 8,000 years ago never stopped. They simply slowed, spread across centuries of incremental strain. The GOC transponders recorded the mountain's voice, a slow acoustic confession transmitted through seawater. 
the slope is failing, gravity is winning, the next collapse will not announce itself with earthquakes or eruptions, it will happen the way mountains fall, suddenly, silently, and without mercy. The Mediterranean remembers what happened, the geological record is unambiguous, synchronized tsunami deposits, displaced sediments across hundreds of kilometers, a Neolithic village abandoned mid-task, fish left to rot, wells turned to salt. Every piece of evidence points to the same conclusion, Etna collapsed before, and the pattern is repeating. Scientists have documented the flank movement with unprecedented precision. They have measured the slip events using acoustic transponders. They have mapped the shallow gas reservoir using seismic tomography. They have calculated the collapse potential based on slope stability analysis. They have published their findings in science advances and geophysical research letters. They have warned that the hazard is real, but they cannot predict when. They cannot stop it. They cannot even say with certainty that catastrophic collapse will happen at all within the next thousand years. All they know is that the mountain is sliding into the sea, faster now than at any point in recorded history, and beneath the waves, transponders that once tracked every shift now sit silent, their batteries dead. The cycle may be 8,000 years, a planetary rhythm as regular as ice ages, or it may be ending tomorrow, triggered by a stress threshold crossed during the next rainstorm or eruption. The Valley del Bove was created in an instant, hours of catastrophic failure after millennia of preparation. How long does a mountain take to fall? And when it finally does, when six cubic miles of rock plunge into the Mediterranean at 200 miles per hour, will anyone be listening?